people won't read, but they'll they'll get, they'll get what you're trying to say out of the art. And well, as I always say, it's dialogue. And absolutely. And we all we all do what we do with it. All right, here we go. So one of the joys of the art world is that it is so easy to meet other creatives. And a mutual friend of my guests, his name is Kim Brown, serves on the Bedford Cultural Commission. Um, actually, she's our leader. And oh, she wow. said, yeah, she said, I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> she said, you should meet uh, my friend Mark Cole. You should look at his artwork and uh, bring him on Artist Bebop. So that's what we did. I looked at your artwork. Thank you for being here, sir. Well, thank you. Um, so to start off, uh, markcoleartist.com is where you can see uh, Mark's work, his website, and then on Instagram, Mark Cole Artist, all one word. So, so check that out. And um, yeah, I was uh, sucked into your website, and um, I uh, okay. I just loved it. I um, there's obviously different segments of work, and um, right. so what what are you currently working on? Well, currently um, I'm working on a lot, a lot of abstract right now. I I um I lost my studio, so right now. I have my art hanging all, we live in a loft, so I have my art, art hanging all over the walls. Um, I drape my kitchen and my dining room with plastic during the day. But, um, so I'm working on it right now is um, called The Embrace right now. And um, you really can't see it, but um, it's, uh, it's about two men embracing uh, and, the, and the dichotomy and all the struggles they go through. So I'm pretty diverse in my work, if you probably saw, from abstract to, um, a lot of social justice um, um, work. Um, I'm just not a short white Irish guy here. I always tell people that. Um, uh, a lot of social justice comes in my life. I've always been in that kind of corporate world, but now I'm sick of that. I'm just no more tie and shirt. I'm just gonna, it's my passion. My dad said to me a long time ago, go with your passion, Mark and I. My passion has always been helping people, but now it's that passion through my art. And I, you know, I finally just breaking out of that corporate world. And I haven't been working, well, I've been working art, but that's part of the problem, you know, that Sergio is that we think of work as going to put the shirt and tie on and driving 45 minutes in a good commute and then well, turn this, around and come back to the same thing. This yeah. world that we're living in currently, um, as I, I keep citing the pandemic, is changing that. Absolutely. It, it's making us more aware of that. I, I, I thought it was interesting what you were saying about um, you lost your studio. The good thing about an artist is that um, any place can become a studio. <laughs> exactly. And you know, and that, that changes for me over the world, over the time. Some years ago, and what you just said just clicked. I used to think about, oh my God, I made a mistake. And I have to get all wigged out about a mistake. And you know, that's changed my mind thought because nothing's a mistake. It's a, it's a new opportunity. There's a reason that that happened. And see, and that, that's kind of where I, my head's at. When I paint, it's a spiritual um, awakening to me, a spiritual adventure to me. It's like, you know, I think I, I've told Kim this many times. I can be at 3.30 in the morning saying, Mark, put the brush down. You know, so <laughs> you gotta get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but when I can lose yourself, that's what my life's about then. So, well, when uh, you're doing what you want, the sleep deprivation doesn't matter. It's no. not a pain. It's not a chore. It's not like you're torturing yourself to stay up. It's no, especially with it's, creation. It's, For me, it's adrenaline. And um, right. I think one thing I miss about the studio is I, I used to have I'd had three different easels up at once, and so. I get an idea and I had to, put, had to go do something right away and then come back to what I was doing. You, you know exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. And so, um, and 
um, sometimes people around you don't understand that because <laughs> you don't have, I mean, I'm the person who texts himself at night so I don't forget an idea. So yeah. for me, this whole, this whole pandemic, as you said, has been an awakening, you know, realize what's important, you know, what's that's not important. I sound cliche and that's really inspired my art more. And so, um, that's why I'm so excited about being with you tonight after watching, uh, especially some of your shows in the past. Oh, yeah. Thank you. you know? I'm, I'm and, glad, and, I'm glad people are watching. I'm glad it has some value. So. Oh, re real value in the, in, in the way you make people feel comfortable because, you know, artists often don't, you have that time where you, you doubt yourself a lot of times. And, um, a friend of mine who, uh, she's a, a radio DJ or she was, she doesn't really do that anymore, but, at the time that we had the conversation, she said, um, I think anyone that does anything creative was at some point um, gifted self-doubt. <laughs> uh, exactly. And it was kind of a bleak statement, but I, was, I said, you're not wrong. That's um, and when I think true. about everyone that I know that has this creative urge in them yeah and, it's an and does something with it <laughs> it's an emotional roller coaster some days you know what i mean because you really believe in what your, your passion a lot of us can paint what people I, I used to say i know a person in Asheville. you know where Asheville, north carolina it's yeah, i had um the best barbecue chicken there oh, yeah. I saw it in a, <laughs> my sister was uh she was and uh, she was doing an internship at Duke University. Okay. And so I was visiting, and my brother and I were in a furniture store, I think shopping for her. And my brother saw this magazine um, with the, the restaurant listed in it, and it looked delicious. So we drove like, I don't know, I don't remember how, it was a, a while. Well, it's in the mountains, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so we went to have barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it was good. <laughs> yeah, it was it was delicious. But yeah, I um I love that area. The I caught a museum there in um and I don't remember what city it was in, but I like the regional art there, the way your your landscape is. It is. It's, it's and that's why one, why we settled here too is because we're in Winston Salem, which is very artistic. It's a it's a city of arts and innovation, what they call. So it's pretty liberal, which we like. And we're from we're originally from New York, upstate. And so mm -hmm. planted here it kind of reminds us of home. But you know, she, the one woman in national artist for 35 plus years, has been pushing me in my art lately since the last couple of years. And she said, you know, that's it's gonna be a roller coaster ride, Mark. Sometimes, yeah. you know. And, and so a lot of my art, because it comes to who we are, I'm exhausted. And if I when you see my website, you see you mentioned it. The opening page is this red, and it's this brokenness of a, and you remember of a face and a, a lot of emotion. It's called trust. Take a breath, so to speak. Dot dot dot. Interrupted, because all of us can relate to that time where I, I remember doing this piece. I was so like emotional, just painting it. The tears were flowing, and the music was going, and um, but also been where you've been so upset by a trust. That's what she, as she said, the emotion comes through. A piece of you dies, you know you've got hopes and you're back. So I always try to struggle with those things in my pieces. About, you know, my big thing is in, I'm doing a piece now called um, Doing Time. It's about um, the, the justice system um, and that I think needs reform. And so having spent some time in a, 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 a B&B, so to speak, that I, I've been on that side and kind of know what the injustices are. And... Mm -hmm. The racial inequality that goes along with that in the, in the quote unquote justice system. So those kind of things I think is important for us as artists to bring to the forefront, because you know some people won't read, but they will get they'll get what you're trying to say out of the art. And well, as I always say, it's dialogue. And absolutely. And we all we all do what we do with it. I don't lean too much politically in the work. But it does happen because mm -hmm. we all have feelings and yes, absolutely. And I'm I'm not a political beast. I'm not a my friends used to tell me I'm, I'm not a religious. I'm spiritual, which I I like better. Yeah. Um, is, is that um 
I just think we all, as human beings, need to have, make a statement for each other to be those reconcilers, those breaking the barriers, the living outside the box, and making place a better place. That's kind of where I'm at. So even when I'm painting those flowers or different things you see on my website, they all have a hidden meaning to them. So or that's my motivation, to tell you the truth, Sergio. That's my motivation. Yeah. How did you how did you start? Like um how far back did the, well, the paint being a, the paint happen? I, give, I, I give Kim I, I usually don't give this away because I tell Kim she's much older than me. But our my friend <laughs> Well, I did tell her, so we, have, we went to high school together, so I do have a lot of stories that I could tell. I told her that. But um, I, I remember during that time, you know, my parents were educators, and you had to stay in that, you know, the college kind of pathway, right? And so the artistic stuff was kind of, that's a nice hobby, kind of. Uh, yeah. But I've always started taking those art classes. Um, and then, I, you know, I went in, like everybody does it, played the life, went to school. Flunked out of school, came back to school, um, of those kind of things. Got married, had kids, real young, and um, and I um, student, I dabbled. I went to floral school in Chicago. I opened a floral shop up, so I still was in the art kind of. You know, where where in Chicago did you move? It was downtown Chicago. I forgot the name, but it was American Floral Art School, and um, I was there for like three months, doing you know intensive classes all day. Um, open, open a shop up, upstate New York. Uh, I worked at the White House for four years as a special events florist going back and forth. Uh, you know, it sounds glamorous, but I was just one of the ones in the next to the kitchen. You know, so. <laughs> um, and then I know I kept, but I always just dabble with art all the time. And so my whole life has been like art, artistic in, in nature. No schooling involved, but that's just my heart. And um, now I'm at a point, you, you know, it's like I'm, culmination of things in your life you kind of put in the back burner for so long you know it's, it's like myself my own struggle in my life I I mean I my husband and I now we've been together 15 years but we had to go through that that progression of being married to women and leaving and then that whole struggle of going through I'm kind of like that with my art I went through this pushing it back so far and now like it's, it's explosion like <laughs> that's why I can't put the brush down at 2 3 30 in the morning and mm -hmm. um and that's why I'm stepping out, really, and I'm in faith that I have somebody to support me to do that, because I'm a you know hungry, emerging, struggling artist like we all are, dude. And so. Well, that that part is important, you know. Whether, of course, if it's a if it's a spouse that's supportive, um, yeah, I think that's the golden ticket. But th that support needs to be from somewhere, either friends or peers or. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, so and I get this, and that's what keeps great. me going. Yeah. It's great that you have that. I mean, it's like a new, new. it's a long chapter, this chapter right now. It's going to get there. Uh, uh, it's, so, it's a fun ride. Um, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine life any other way. So. And that's kind of where I'm at now. I, I, you know, I wake up and I'm, I'm really glad to be doing what I'm doing now. You know, making a difference. I think even it's going to make a difference somehow. And so, um, and connecting with different people and the support I've had of the art community, you know, it's been phenomenal. And, and that's what I, you know, the woman in Asheville has been doing this for 35, 40 years. She's my biggest nemesis sometimes, I tell her, because she challenges me so much. I mean, in the studio one day, I knew she was coming and I put, tucked some things away, you know, like those things are working on. You know what she did? She went right over like a magnet and pulled out this piece. I said, well, I kind of like this one. Why aren't you doing this one? And for months, it's done now. For months, it was just like, almost be talking to me. I had to finish it, <laughs> but, it but it challenged me. Yeah. And, I, and so that's, those are the good things. Talk a little bit about how, how do you go about exhibiting? And Well, the pandemic's been tough right now. So, so that obviously because, changed. Changed it, but so I mean, were you basically were showing? That's what, yeah, I'm, just, I'm showing. I'm trying to do a, an art show on 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 um, virtually, virtually. Sorry, thank you. Um, also, I, my website, which is fairly brand new, um, and I have over launching. I do have a, an agent in New York. Um, yeah, happens to be my cousin, so I got a good deal. So oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so because um, 
I, he was for years an agent at, in New York for modeling. So he knows a lot of folks and people. So um, that's all he knows. So I'm connecting that way as well. Um, and one and what I'm going to think trying to do is to get my name out there. So I believe in giving back to the community, like you're doing. Like I've seen what you're doing with the American Negro League. I mean, I think it's phenomenal. Those things, you know? Well, I mean, the, um, the thing is, things come along that are close to our heart. And, um, absolutely. It's I mean, a great well, partnership. I'm, I'm, yes, and it's not, one of the things I was going to tell you, is, as a side, when I was in Dominican Republic, Sammy Sosa, you know, is from San Pedro de Macorís, which is where we did our work. And so at one point, we were trying to partner with them to do, we, we started a little like, um, um, baseball in the barrios for the kids. So we got mm-hmm. churches back home support, like sending baseball bats and, you know, um, uniforms and baseball and all that kind of stuff because we live right next to Cooperstown, New York. And so with the Baseball Hall of Fame is. So there's a lot of interest yeah. of course, for baseball. And so bring those things I was gonna, to the side to the to those, to those barrios, it just raised somebody's expectations and hope for life. And so what you're doing is that little thing. And so one of the things I want to continue to do is when I sell something, a piece of work of art, 10% is going to go back to the community, 5% to a cause I believe in, and 5% for the, what the seller or the buyer believes in. And so to give us back to the community what we should be doing for helping people. So. Yeah, you, you mentioned the, the virtual show I'm a part of, and it's uh, yes. the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum art show. And that's so great. I just um, recorded with uh, Tad Richardson, who's um, leading that campaign. I was, I was reading about. It. See, I read a lot. Of, I read a lot of your stuff. <laughs> okay, and I, I but I, I love um, I love his thinking. I'm learning a lot just watching how much art and causes, and you know, you talked about the corporate world, but mm-hmm. kind of. Um, melding all of that and showing them that you know the the artists that are here right um, working can bring tremendous value Mm -hmm. even to that big structured world absolutely and and I'm all about pushing that and because yeah part of our talk was you know, you, you have this creative urge. A lot of my life was refining that and just being mm. persistent with it. And, um, but then you get to a point where it's like, okay, what now? I'm really, I've right. really exercised these muscles. What now? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. Okay. And it goes back to what we said before about the work that you do hopefully touches somebody they are inspired sort of to buy, to purchase. But that's not, that's not enough. You got to take what you put in that canvas to actually do something more to change the world. And that's what you're doing. And that's what I hope to do because that's, that's what comes right down to. What can you give back to, 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 to honor what the world's about and change some people's lives. And there's different strata to that. A lot of, especially right now, I'm heavy into the pop art. Mm-hmm just because it's making so many people happy. Right. Like I, I get so much engagement from that and people are just happy and it's, um, and sales are great, but that's even more great. Cause so you say, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Cause, you, see, you, cause you, you, you commented on, um, when you saw some of my pictures and it's the three little words that you said, I dig your pic, I dig your pictures, man. And it was the one that you did it on was, Kind of a pop art abstract. It was a three three collage. Um, um, I'm not sure I can show the camera. Let me see or not. See. Yeah, like, well, uh, I'll, I'll visually, I'll uh, verbally yeah. describe what we're looking at, just because okay. we do an audio version as well. But yeah, go ahead. Well, this is kind of like the, the pop art, uh, the art you saw. This First is the of body. all, there's a fantastic house here. <laughs> yes, yes. You like my house? <laughs> I love it, man. It's, no, this is a. <laughs> it's that used to be. It's a little good. It's, it's, yeah, he's it's lagging. It's a bit old textile there, mill. He, and so. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's wild. It used to be. It used to be an old textile mill. So. Oh, um, we didn't get to the painting, so let's. let's okay. Uh, so, let's so, turn so, back. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. That's ADD. <laughs> I had that big time. So. Drives my husband. So this this is the foot the feet if you can see. Okay. 
Okay, so then. yeah, what what I like, uh, I guess you sent me these. Yeah, this was a Facebook, like like this one right here of my mom and I. I call mine Madonna. So it's yeah, win, what very I, whimsical. Go ahead. See, I, I love that that mother piece, but they're they're just very colorful, and then gee, uh, there's geometry going on, and then there's the figurative elements, and um, just really strong work. I love it. And those are the pieces that you that you just clicked to me. That I have the most. I mean, talking about hits for the most common is what you said. I think maybe it's the times you live in, like you just said, that just gives them a feeling of happiness. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? Well, no, those are, yeah, you, you do feel that in there. Like, I just, uh, colors always do that for me. Mm -hmm. like, I, I always say I grew up around a lot of pi pinatas. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and so color to me, it's a party. And... Um, to have that happen in art is my favorite thing. And when people get that feeling, for me as an artist, that's really a payoff for me. If I haven't sold anything, it's that payoff that somebody's getting something out of what comes from my heart. And yeah. I, I know you understand that. Well, I, 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 I love that concept because I remember um, in Houston, Texas, mm. I, I did a market one morning and it was – those markets are, they can be grueling. And it's just, I think it was June, just really hot. This market wasn't the most um, greatly organized. So we didn't have much traffic, but we did have like one or two people from the neighborhood that were walking their dog walk through and no one's selling anything. And I have um, this girlfriend that I had at the time, um, I guess worried that, this was going to bum me out. Oh. But I said, well, you know, if anything, I showed up here and um, I entertained two people from the neighborhood that may or may not have taken the time to look at art otherwise. Mm. And, um, okay. and that's valuable to me. I never um, have measured success in terms of well, how much are you selling? Mm -hmm. That to me, mm -hmm. it's necessary because there's an economy. Also, I don't want all this stuff in my house. Um, I got you. Yeah, yeah I, <laughs> I hear you. I definitely hear you there. So I, I work <laughs> hard. <laughs> I work hard to move it as much as I can, put it places. Um, it needs to be out in the world because I need to make new stuff. And um, Right, right. And that's what I'm kind of working on right now is how I can get my stuff out. Um, to different places and benefit um, other folks. How, um, how often do you create? Every day. Yeah, good. Every day. I can't, there's not enough hours in a day at, at all. Um, I'm working on some new things. I'm doing working on some sculpture now. I'm, I'm using wire figures. Um, I used a lot of eggs. I know it sounds weird, but I use a lot of eggs in my stuff. Um, crushed eggs for background pieces, for texture. Um, I, eggs are a sign of life. So to me, it's very symbolic. Um, I also take eggs and I blow them out and I fill different levels of um, paint with silicone in a certain a designated area so I get that, that, that vibrant splash explosion effect as I climb a ladder. Have you researched using that type of media? That right there is my own creation um, that I do that. I asked because a friend of mine, his name's Martin DeVore. Um, okay. Martin DeVore? Martin DeVore. Okay. And he was uh he was using egg temper or egg mm -hmm. tempura? Something with an egg base to it. And um he had some problems at an exhibit where the bugs were getting to it. So just be careful. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I I, com well, I completely like cleanse everything for like I take eggshells and dye them. Um, okay. those kind of things. But it just I like the I like the symbolism of the egg, first of all, because mm -hmm. of life and um and then the, I'm trying to recycle a lot of stuff too that I do, so yeah, as well. So yeah, well, I I think I, I saw some of the the mixed media pieces on your yes. site. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot of them. Um, and so I just try to kind of reinvent every time I look at an opportunity when I see something. Um, I like to go to old like Goodwills or older places like that where there's like junk and see if those things inspire me. And yeah. so I mean that's kind of yeah. where I created juices from too. I um. 
I think have an unnatural fascination with antique shops. <laughs> that's why I live here. That's why I live here for. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I just like to see it. everything's like a um, a challenge too. How can you make that to something that somebody be drawn towards? Like you took something recently when your paintings you have on, on wood, the, the circular. Well, I mean, that oh, I love means... I love doing that. Yeah, yeah. Like, those kind of yeah. things. I mean, I took a piece. So, well, somebody gave me those. Uh, they were just slices of tree branches. But I love working on a different surface because then you start to think differently. It also just exactly exactly yeah, automatically it has a different um, lean, a different mood. So mm -hmm. that's fun to think, play with. And things flow. You give you ideas you never have thought about before. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, yeah, you've probably been with have friends. I'm sure you do that. But sometimes they look at me and go like I'm nuts or something. How do you come up with these ideas? And you know, it's just like I don't know. You you understand what I'm saying? But it, they just come to you. Well, I um, I've been nuts a long time. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm. I'm. An, it's just understood at this point. I think. Yeah, that's not I mean, a bad. That's not a bad thing. They say he's he's an artist. It's like, <laughs> that works. It's branding. It's true. <laughs> I like that though. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm just gonna keep on plugging along, trying to. I think. Folks like yourself are helping new and emerging artists. So I thank you for that for because it is getting our name out a little bit and our style. Yeah, totally. And making that's those the... connections. Making those connections. We're gonna do. Um so that's that's my biggest right now. So just keep keep on pushing along. We are gonna send you something though. Because we do I do have some some gear, some swag to send you. Okay, so cool. I, I, this is on my um we're sending you a couple of bunch of these. These are um the masks we have my, with my my logo on. And I so love that. I'll rock I can send that. so send you out some and the, the guy. I'll, I'll, the, I'll see what I have here and I'll, I'll send something back. <laughs> I love that. I think the more we can make those connections and people say, "Hey, what is that?" And then you can tell them because the guy that did this, he's a really cool young African American guy that I'm actually I'm the wedding planner for their wedding, but we had to call that off too. I do that. I do that on the side. That's the side gig. So, so and, and I'm. It's funny. Um, I think it's natural to the creative process to have multiple projects and a diversity of projects. You know, I you're right. <laughs> I mean, you're right. I mean, not just for survival, but to keep you going. Well, it's just um, it, it. It seems like every artist is a little ADD. Yeah, like, it's part of who we are. <laughs> I know. I people say I, I I do go from one thing to the other. Like I'm mm -hmm. besides doing that, I'm just finishing up my. 120 hours te te um, teaching English as a second language class. So okay. I can do that online as well. So I figure yeah. the more I do the pieces together, the more I can stay home and paint. So, you know, in the end, everything goes into the work. Absolutely. Um, I have, <laughs> I have a lot of degrees and um, the <laughs> common question that aren't related to art in a direct way. Um, and the the question that comes up a lot is, well, you know, what do you do with that? And the answer is that it goes into the work, you know, my, um, especially, you know, I was a literature philosophy. Those are my backgrounds. Okay. Um, along, photography was the art thing that was concurrent right. with that. But my sense of narrative, mm -hmm. um, all of that. It goes into the work. Absolutely. Just the the thoughtfulness comes from all of that, which, yeah, it seems like um, I, I wasted degrees, but I, I never see it that way. You know, so, I, thank you for that, because that helped me out. Going through, cause my, my background is, is religion and theology. I mean, I'm an ordained Episcopal yeah. priest. So, but I, the people always say, well, what do you got the MDiv for? What are you going to do with that? Well, as I've been talking to you this tonight, much of my work is because of that spiritual, philosophical background that, as you said, flows into our work. I never thought about it. So thank you. I thought. It's your background. You, um, whether you want to or not, it, it creeps into what you do. And it's your being, yeah. I think 
I think the best thing for anyone is to embrace embrace what they are. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, I think that makes the best work. It's, Absolutely. It's just using you know, it's, it's, what you know. Just, actually, this, this time tonight has helped me grow tonight as an artist because oh, as you good, just said, man. I mean, it, does, it really not, seriously, because you, you are always evolving. And so, as you just said, grow is part of who you're being. And it's like when somebody knows you, they know you're phony. They know you're just speaking the words. And they're going to know that about your art, too, as well. So, you know. People can smell it, can't they? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I smell a few things sometimes, too. So. If you're not being <laughs> authentic. Um, That's the face. People, yeah. They, they may not say anything, but. That's that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's polite, but yes. but it's not. It. I think it's important to be true to yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. So, thank you for that. Oh well, yeah. Uh, thank you. These. I, I was somebody was asking me about the podcast earlier. Yeah. And I said, um, I feel a little guilty because I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm taking from every guest that comes on here. <laughs> like it's it's an experience for me, and it's it enriches me and i'm I'm like i hope that i'm giving that balance back you are you are because as i was watching other ones before i came on here tonight it's actually you know your pacer i'm just being i'm very transparent guy you just i'm just pacing around here saying there's no studying for this test and so i but it really (laughs) it's really giving me uh as i saw prior it's affirming myself as an artist as a, as a human being, it feels me more connected to all the folks now and, yeah. and that I might don't even know face to face like we're talking now, but I've, through you, through watching podcasts, I've grown more too. And it's from what I'm doing. It's a broader spectrum, it raises the bar, makes it a broader spectrum. So that's, that's awesome. I mean, and part of that for me comes from when I was younger, we weren't, um, say what, there's different opinions on social media, mm-hmm. but I love the connectivity that we have. It's different. There are pros and cons, but when I was a younger artist, we didn't have this. And, um, and in turn, it felt a lot more of a, like a solitary journey. There were Just people that were helpful along the way, but then it felt like there was a lot of people that weren't, and I don't, um, I think part of my concern is I don't want anyone else feeling that way because that, um, that's hard and it can create negativity and, um, well, I just, you know, it helps me in my, I'm just saying this, this right here and more of this right here, you know what you're doing, I will hope it branches out. It helps erase some of that self-doubt you have about yourself lots of times. Yeah. I mean, I, I like what you said before a few seconds ago about social media you know i have a friend that's we've been friends for since middle school and we don't we don't miss almost a week of talking okay just we just don't miss a week of talking and um he told me uh, three weeks ago uh, that he has cancer it's, it's not operable it's, 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 it's bone cancer so we call i call him every day i said i don't care you hang up with me i said because you know what we need the affirmation you know, and I can't hug him. I can't hug him physically. But if we didn't have this, what you and I are doing, can do that. So for you to do this, for folks like myself who are new and emerging, have been wanting this my whole life, know that, that this is what they're supposed to be doing, your passion, is really, I'm, I'm just saying, I hope you take this through. Really help myself and other artists there. I hope they hear me out there that know that they're, they do have that support and that you've been on the journey longer than I have. How about, I mean, how publicly. But that um, you're there to 20, help us on twenty something years, yeah, yeah. But you're here to help us on the journey, even though we've been on it, but hiding it in the closet, so to speak. I've done that already, so that we can um, <laughs> that we can come out, so to speak, and and be um, affirming. So thanks. Well, it, it's good. I'm cl- I'm glad to hear that. We're just gonna call your doctor Sergio. <laughs> don't say that my mom always picked on me for not going for the doctor <laughs> listen we can all vote and give you honor everyone <laughs> that'd be awesome <laughs> so you, you said you had come from the corporate world as well mm-hmm. like, what did you do well, I mean, 
I've had, I've had a lot of backgrounds from being a florist, like I said, mm-hmm. to I, I had I was a parish priest for 10 years, missionary work, to I then I was human service. I was a director at um, Goodwills, a lot of places, and um, all human services. One of the biggest things I did was a um, program called Jobs on the Outside for folks with any kind of criminal background to find unemployment because it's tough out there to find unemployment. And so, and that people, and work is people value. Yeah. You know, bring the lives. So, um, you know, to go into the payoff for me, it was like, I go to the store now and people see me. And um, I came to that. I believe that, you know, whether it's God or your higher power, there's a reason things happen in your life. And so I couldn't be where I was and the things that happened in my life. I mean, I served prison time in federal prison. But after three years of fighting things, it was IRS related, et cetera. But I took a plea. We're going to get into that, but I thought my life was over with. I finally found a job. You know, it doesn't matter what degree you had, what master, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, and I found as a specialist, a work my way up director, all through this program. But the biggest thing is I remember going into a room of new people coming in to have help who thought their lives were over, who maybe tried to commit suicide two or three times because they couldn't find work and couldn't value. And I come in there and, you know, here I am, this, like I said, short white blonde guy, my shirt, my corporate shirt and tie. And they're like, <sighs> I mean, last time I was the only Caucasian guy in the, in the place, right? I just keep, and I said, <sighs> okay, we just gotta be here because my PO wants me here. But you know what? Just like art, when you tell your story, and they know that you've been to one of those places before, and then there's no BS. Yeah. They, you know that you're there. And so that's why I was able to be successful because when you be yourself with people and know that you're going the extra mile because you've been there, you know, you know, that's what makes a difference. So for me, that's why this art makes a difference. I mean, I used to say, you know, how can you tell somebody how it is that you've been there? When, when my ex-wife and I had a child, a very first child, remember we were young, you know, who, who came in the room to tell us how to have a baby? A Roman Catholic nun. Hello, have a baby? <laughs> okay, so I mean the same way as that. I'm saying is that you can't. I can't learn the stuff in the books, and so that's why I try to bring into my art as well. So that's why a lot of my affirmation, to tell you the truth, one of the things I want to do, and just put this in the back burner. They did it one time out of Colorado, but didn't really go. It was called Art with Conviction. I would like to have an art show where people with any kind of background. Artists who are from sculptors to painters to to musicians to you know poetry to all those things to have some kind of art show for that because there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of talents and can support themselves that way. So you're going to hear more about that because I think art with conviction, playing words, is that you can have something that people could say, bring value to their lives. And again, tell a story, maybe touch some young person that has maybe going down a different route. Say, oh, I can use my art for something to express myself. Well, yeah, that sounds extremely empowering. That's great. Um, There's one young man that he, I was teaching GD classes. He uh, was in my class because his PL told he had to be there. And um, I said to him, and he's from the Dominican Republic, so we had that kind of connection. And so he said, I said, Terso, what are you doing? And he was like doodling. I said, do you know about graphic design? He didn't know a thing about it. We did some research, long story short. I went to his. He got his degree, he got an associate's degree like that, smart guy. Went to his degree to get an associate's degree, and now has a bachelor's degree so with SUNY in Albany, and he's now working as a graphic designer. And he still keeps touching me 15 years later. To me, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, so that's why it's awesome. important. Well, li- listening to, to um, your history, uh, mm-hmm. that humanitarian string and leaning always seems to have been there. That's Where my core. That um, my mom probably. That's a lot of the, um, she grew up a little tough. She's a single mom. My grandma was a single mom. But, but um, and she always put value in that by helping other folks. She was the first woman ever council person in our small town. I mean, so breaking some of those barriers and things like that. And that's why one of my pieces is called My Madonna. My Madonna. Because I think we all have that person in our life. Yeah. That kept us going. I mean, she um, she's amongst the living now, but she's Alzheimer's, so she really doesn't know anything. But yeah, I know that the one small spark, and she that spark of hers will ever be part of mine. That's what I do. What I do. 
that's why that's why I keep going. Yeah, my my mom has has been such a great force. I I'm 43 years old, and she um still gives me the words that. If I didn't have that in my life, if I didn't grow up with that, I think it would have been a different experience. So, Absolutely. I, mean, I can say my, my, this un unconditional love goes a long ways. For sure, yeah. And so that's what I think. That's, you can see the passion in my voice even as I talk about those experiences. But I'm telling you, I'm to this moment talking with you right now for a reason. Yeah. And so yeah, that's for sure. that's a blessing. So, thank yeah. you. I um, like I said, this this is such a weird time of um, whether you like it or not, self reflection. <laughs> oh, that's true. And and I think about all it's of true. The, the connections, especially doing this podcast. I'm, you know, you're in a different time zone, but yeah, I'm talking to people around the world. Really, that's cool. And we're um, we all get to exchange ideas about this thing I've worked my whole life at mm -hmm. you know? and, oh, yeah. and, and how to how to amplify it because other people have too or if they haven't they're starting to again or wherever they are in the journey it's all the same we're all after the same fish absolutely so, and the more we make those connections with each other like through this the stronger it's going to be the man yeah. is going to be and that's what it's going to be. So, yeah. um, so my biggest thing now, sometimes our supplies are really thin now with the pandemic. It's hard to get some, some, some supplies in. So about making do. You know, it's funny. Um, I have a friend. She, um, I won't say her name, but she, <laughs> she stopped, she stopped painting for a bit and she mm. had her reasons. And I was at her place and we're, um, she said, yeah, you know, I kind of want to paint, but I don't have the right supplies. And, um, and so I, I told her she has a lot of my pieces. I'm very flattered to be in her collection, but she has a wall, this wall of art and I'm in there. And, um, so I pointed to, uh, the piece, the very first piece she bought for me. And I said, um, I was going through some stuff when you bought that piece. I had relocated from Houston into foreign territory. I didn't know anyone. I didn't have much money for supplies. I'm like, and that painting is made from those little 50 cent acrylics from Walmart. I know the what little, you're talking about, yes. The little Apple brand. Yeah. I'm like, so don't put a barrier on your creativity because right. you don't have the right supplies. And like you have pencils in here, you have markers. Um, yep. you, you don't need, um, you don't need much. So no, just, just your imagination. Yeah. And in 50 cents maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> listen to be telling the truth. I did that today. So <laughs> I needed something. <laughs> hey, I, I, I think they're, uh, they're great. Well, and supplies are like that for me because I remember um, I crap, cracked the uh, the guy at the art store up one day because he said, um, you know, he's showing me this paint. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not, um, pardon my French, that's not shitty enough. I wanted some cheap looking paint. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and that Walmart <laughs> brand hits it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to ripple once in a while, you know, too. So, well, there there was an artist that I um, I still admire, T.D. Snyder in Houston, and um, and I he had this look to a lot of the paintings, and so I uh, he invited me over and we were making stuff together, and I was like, oh, I'm like, that's what he's using is those apple paints, and before that, I was very weary of them, you know, because people. Um, I've been influenced by other people, you know, the, you know, your supplies. No, and, I, and I was like, I love his work and he's using that. So I started to, you, you'll still see them in my um, supplies. Sometimes 
with the grocery deliveries, there'll be little apple pants that come. <laughs> sneak, sneak them in. Uh, I just, I'll, I'll, I'll put them in the rotation. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do I, stuff too. But I'll be honest, they're, they're in my stuff too. So that's not. Yeah, I, uh, they're they're good stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, they, I saw the right fit. the right color, the right color I wanted today for something. So exactly, mm-hmm. I took it. So absolutely. <laughs> funny um so yeah uh, online presence like how has that worked for you how i mean i've been um, using i've been trying to use a lot of instagram and facebook right now um okay i mean those are my two main ones right now as well promoting the website a lot um and then i have i try to get other people to promote as well and i have i mean i have some good we just created a facebook page just like a last less than a week ago Okay. Just as into that, and we have, I think there's 165 kids, so I'm pretty happy with that so far. And so, that's awesome, yeah. I mean, just a little by little by little. Um, when you believe in something, you know it's going to happen, so it's going to happen. And, um, so it grows. I mean, they're, they're, um, it's interesting because I guess e- each platform, as I say, is a different language, but the, um, Facebook. I always view as like the people I'm shaking hands with Mm. and increasingly like I still post on there. I still do all my stuff, but I think as far as organic growth, that's kind of gone. I think Mm -hmm. because how about Instagram? They have um, same, same thing, but what is valuable is um, for me, I found that compartmentalizing the work and then paying for their boosts, that is effective. Okay. Um, I separate my baseball series mm-hmm. and then put a targeted boost on that. And then it uh, it's much more effective. But the, uh, the idea, I've seen like just posting regularly and using right. hashtags, very little traction. Doing yeah, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't seem to help the hashtags. It, it's all. gone. Yeah. Um, but the boost, I'm glad you said that because I, as a new person using that, they keep asking me. So now that you said that, I think I might try that, actually. Yeah. Um, well, especially in your work, I see um, there are different subsets of work. So yes, there, yes, there are. Not, not that you're asking for advice, but like... No, uh, I, I want that. Mark Cole Flowers, make that a, an account. I got you. Um, social social justice be one thing, and I and like the. Um, well, well, here's my thinking on it, and it's it's been working for me because that okay. flowers it'll. Their algorithms are good once you pay for them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and so they'll because I think the machine and I'm not an expert at this, but I think what's happening is it's um, linking it to users that looked at similar images. I so they you. see your feed, and then you right. got followers. And for me, those followers have turned into uh, to clients. So, That's it. That right there um, is the greatest hint. So, yeah, I, I, I'm still, uh, I'm, I'm always on the journey, just like everybody else. And you see, the more I'm just, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, this is a blessing to me because the more you help folks like myself, you know, that that's part of the about part of the journey. You see, we're strengthening the, yeah, everybody. Well, I mean, we all we all have our our voice that we are that deserves to be heard. So thank you. I'm I'm happy. We should you should have you should have a call in to have little hints from people. <laughs> you know, ask, ask you. <laughs> I I uh I envision in the future like giving a little more production, but I don't. I think you need a second person once you do a live thing. Do or, to try to try to um feel them. Or I do because I'm I'm still fumbling through as you saw when we got onto the call we couldn't get the audio working <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> that's real that's real if if i had a tech person um then man that'd be awesome but well, i could see i could see people calling in and asking for your advice about i mean people like i mean i'm for people not as far as i'm right now even like just say how do i how does i believe as a talent or something i should what do i do that sense of yeah. encouragement i think it'd go a long way in the art world yeah, I, well, they, they, we don't. There's no turf thing. We're here to help each other. Yeah, I think in general, it'd just be cool to have uh, other Absolutely. people chime into the conversation. 
So I, I would love that. Actually, I'd be tuning in for that. Yeah. I mean, I, you, you can make these go live, but um, I don't know. I think I, I've got to research it more. I've got to, I've got to poke at my, uh, my other friends that are podcasting. Yes. I really love, I've always heard, it's like, you should go South by Southwest in, in Austin. And um, I've always wanted to do that. I've heard the networking there mm-hmm. could help us amplify this thing. <laughs> I, I, I think I have a good thing going here, sir. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, thank I you. Um, so what, what's next? What's, what's, what's the big future vision? The thing is next to try to get, really try to get uh, a virtual art show for myself on mm-hmm. uh, here. I'll uh, promote that next. And then as soon as the pandemic is over with, I want to have a show where I can invite folks to come and have um, even some new, new artists and music artists to be playing. So I have like a real creative buzz kind of go. Cause that's my next, that's my plan. And so, yeah. um, and I purposely have an, an agent. I mean, there's a reason I have that because I'm not good at negotiating some stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like if I might say, oh, just give me what you think. And I can't do that. So take me out yeah. of the loop. I want to sell myself short, to tell you the truth. So it takes practice. And I think knowing, knowing what you want to do for me, mm-hmm. um, I mean, that, that's changed. Life has changed it sometimes, you know, um, right. in Houston, I had a different career than I had here, but I, I'm also thinking differently a lot lately. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I had a, I had a friend, um, who hit me up about a commission and he's like, wow, I, I thought it would be more than that. And I said, uh, Donovan, I'm, I'm the working man's painter. <laughs> <laughs> <Like that. laughs> <laughs> because well, part of that's like uh, I just I like the idea that everyone could feasibly afford me even if mm-hmm. they broke mm-hmm. I, I, I love that idea right. and so the more the more I've been uh, marketing and working on everything it's like I, I think I, I really want to keep that going and, and push it because I think everybody should collect art. I think those too. So it's like um, kind of. I just talked to a friend in Amsterdam. She's an artist there, and uh, we talked mm. about how abundant flowers were there. Oh yes. Like everywhere, like that's okay. So yeah, being a florist, have you yes, been yes. to Amsterdam? Yeah, I haven't answered. Yep. Yeah. It's gorgeous, right? Just flowers yeah, absolutely. everywhere. Absolutely, all of this. If we could do that with art. <laughs> oh yes. If art was just in every house and original art, not not um something you bought at IKEA or um No. I, I gotta tell you, I have a grandson that I shouldn't say I'm older than but I have a grandson who's in Buffalo, New York. And I'll send you a picture. He he set up not a lemonade stand. He he's just eight years old, right? He set up his art stand. He's a studio he has, it's up in his basement, a studio, put all his artwork out there and all the, and he sold it off. Awesome. And so, so that what we're talking about, that's what we're talking about, that mentality. Not a lemonade stand, but an art stand. And he, I was actually on the phone with him one day, and they called me Dado, which is Irish for grandfather. And so he said, Dado, just a minute. And what? He, and I could hear the man saying, where's that kid that sells, where's the kid that sells the art on the street? And the, this little, this little booth. <laughs> he said, that's me. So, <laughs> so, I said, well, go ahead and take care of business first. Probably back. So... But when you say that, that that's that's gonna be a good world to live in. Kids are awesome that way. This morning I, I did um I have this thing called the Little Monster Project. I do, I, I love that. Actually, I saw, I saw that too. It's okay, great... cool. So we did our first uh it was our first rodeo doing a virtual show, which I was I was nervous about. Uh, oh like, yeah. I was just gonna work. Cause, and <laughs> yeah, some of my kids were like two years old. It, mm-hmm. it was it was amazing. Um but it was a good time and it just made me miss um, the work that we were doing before COVID. Um, right. Giving that to children. I love hearing the lemonade stand story and that he's integrated the art into that. But yeah, it's that idea that um, it should be like um, the flowers in Amsterdam. Absolutely. 
you know, it, it comes with, it, it comes with the kids too. That's I'm so glad you're doing that. I mean, Kim had originally told me about it, so I looked it up, and um, that's where it starts with the kids too. Let them express themselves. They don't get worried about those. And those, that's, it's it's a beautiful program. Well, those inhibitions. I I want to I want to get rid of that. I I don't like it. I I think from an early age, you taught that your expression is. Yes. It's valuable and beautiful, however you do it, in that lead to a stronger person. Yeah, really. And so, yeah, it, I think it could help so many things. So, absolutely. So keep on doing that. That's for sure. Oh, we, I mean, we that's, will. that's. I mean, I worked. Yeah. I worked at Head Start as a director. I mean, it was a called the Feminist Success Center, trying to break the second two generational poverty, get people out, of, you know, out of poverty. And so, to do something like that, we had. The biggest um, head start, early head start in North Carolina. If you have that in the homes, just that little bit of thing, expressing kids would mean the world to them. That sometimes life at home is not the best. They can express those things different ways too, and mm. they're creative. The outlet for them. So yeah. I think that's. I love. I love the name too. The little monster yeah. project. So. Well, it's named after my kids, so that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I've got the name, so <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> so keep on doing what you're doing. Though. They are inspiring. I'll say that. Um, okay, so I'm going to mention your website again. Okay. MarkColeArtist.com sure. And then on Instagram, find Mark at uh, MarkColeArtist. All right. Word. C-O-M. And then we got, we got an inquiry front page on the website. So any questions, just shoot us an email. I'll get right back to you. Yeah. I'm excited about what you're doing, your visions. So um if you'd like i'd like to have you back like when some time has elapsed and we can we can talk I'll about like, all the progress and i'd like so. to bring you to my studio then too yeah that's what, that's what i'd like to do bring you to my studio that'd be well, that's, awesome. that's a date that's a date man yeah well um i don't know I've got, I've, got, I've got all all these ideas so maybe maybe we'll start doing studio visits record that yeah. type of thing that'd be cool and I hope we, I'm going to, I still want to correspond with you because I think that you give a lot back to myself. So thank you. Oh, well, yeah, no, no problem. I'm here. All right. I'll be sending you, I'll be sending you off some masks too. Okay. Yes. I'll, uh, I'll send something back. Yeah. All right. Stuff. I, later, just later, just um, message me your address. So I know where to get it to PO box. Okay. Or something, okay? All, right, man. all right, sir. Hey, thank, thank you very you. much. Have a blessed holiday too. You too. All right. Bye. Hey, bye. Be